Hello and welcome to 360 GamerCast episode 123 for Tuesday the 7th of June 2022. I'm your host Mark Webb, Gamertag Pierce under the Steam ID, Webby 360G. And joining me on this very fine evening is... Out of Venom, aka Dave. And Senso Switch once again. Everyone's got a mate called Dave. <laughs> Everyone, that's two people I know called Dave now. Oh, oh my goodness, Dave, it's nice to have you on. Uh, regular Gran Turismo 7 um, race rival uh, who beats me too many times. But uh, it, but but uh, it, it's good to have you on, mate, because uh, we, we, we do have a good time on that and Forza and hopefully in the future Formula 1 as well. And obviously Darren is here as usual, which is super awesome. Uh -huh. Nice to have you here, mate. Um, so, obviously this week is Patreon week, so if you're not listening to it live on Twitch right now, which I see seven of you are, hello, seven people watching live, uh, you're only going to get the first 20 minutes and the rest of it's going to be on the Patreon, so just to make you aware if you have forgotten, and I haven't forgotten about the uh, giveaway for the Patreons as well, I, uh, I, because I haven't had a lot of time today, because of my kids, I'm going to do it next week. So basically what I'm going to be doing is everyone who's a Patreon, I'm going to be doing a giveaway every month. So what I'm going to be doing is um, there's like 27 or 8 of you at the moment. So what I'm going to do is put all of your names into, uh, assign you a number uh, and put you into a random number generator on Google. I'll do it live on Twitch next week. And whoever is the winner gets, uh, gets a, I don't know, gift card or something. So um yeah, so look forward to that next week. I think that'll be quite cool and quite fun to do. So there is that. But anyway, we have Dave here this week. Nice to have you, as I said before. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, Dave. You've been a member of the community for quite a while. We've had some breakfast sessions in the past, and you are a, a, a keen um, race, well, keen racer in in video games right it's kind of your main forte right yeah i'd say it's my main interest i, I play everything you yeah. know if there's something yeah. new that floats my boat then i'll jump onto it but um if there's a good racing game out i'll always buy it I'm, I'm in my 40s i've been i've been gaming since I don't know, atari days back in back in the time and i've had virtually everything since then i wouldn't say i'm like you guys that i kind of have a encyclopedic knowledge of these games i just enjoy them yeah um i do remember all my racing games all the mm -hmm. gran turismos pgrs that came that type of thing um, and yeah just yeah yeah um and yeah, I mean, we've we've had some good nights on the um, both the Xbox, PlayStation, and on the PC because we also had a bit of a dabble with Automobilista too as well, didn't we? Yeah, I really enjoyed that because because um, me, you, and <coughs> Laffer, who's one of your mates in real life, actually, isn't he? Um, he is. Yeah, we. Um, we all like to jump on and try a few different racing games, and we did go through a little uh, period of trying out some of the PC sim racers as well. And yeah, we, we, we did have a good session on Automobile Easter. Now that, 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 that was a little while ago, but if memory serves, we were all using our steering wheels on that session, right? Well, yeah. 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 yeah because yeah, I... that is one of the more sim racers, isn't it? Out of most of them nowadays. Yeah. It would certainly be up there with your set of courses and your eye racing style. Yeah, really punishing type of lose the back end of the car and have to struggle with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good, good fun. But we haven't played any PC sim races together for a while, have we? Because obviously, Grand Grand Turismo's come out, and uh, we've been pretty hooked on that, to be honest. And I think before we talk about Grand Turismo, one of the, I think one of the reasons why that has become our main game, or especially for me, is because I think. With the PC sim racers, I mean, yeah, they 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 look good and they feel amazing with, um, with a, with with a steering wheel. But I think it's I don't know if you feel this, but I think there's a little bit too much choice on the PC, and and I struggle to nail down one 
racer to play you know i've got four or five installed on steam and then whenever i fancy playing a sim racer on steam i, I sit there for ages just trying to under, trying to decide which one to play and then i'll decide on one and then i'll spend about half an hour on it and then i'll move on to another one i just can't seem to stick to just one whereas on the playstation you've only got gran turismo um and it's damn good it's it's amazing graphics and it feels amazing um so that's kind of where we've fallen into yeah. if that makes sense yeah i agree i mean i i think the pc races are brilliant and the the but they're all a bit niche yeah you know i mean i racing obviously is like meant to be the most realistic and all this type of thing but you know to me it, it looks old and mm-hmm. yeah. i like to have a bit of a you know i still like to see the the nice things and to have camera modes and things like this and you know it's but yeah there's there's probably too many i feel on the pc and i tend to like to race a variety of things and they tend to be a little bit more focused you know set of course competition alley is kind of gt3 and fours and yeah you know i i like racing all kinds of things yeah yeah and and this is where gran turismo i mean it is defined as a racing simulator but it's not like super simmy like a set of corsa but i think it has that happy medium in the physics department and it looks absolutely gorgeous um but i think what sets it apart as well is you know it has a really good selection of tracks and a really good selection of cars and i think that's what makes it because you because you know when we go on on an evening we'll decide on a few different types of cars in an evening so you're not kind of just stuck to i don't know just f1 cars or gt3 cars whatever you could race bloody you know, we we could say, oh, let's race some golfs around the track or something. You know what I mean? And and that's fine. So I, th- I think that's where yeah. where it has that that good element to it, where it's a general all all, all rounder. You know, I think, the, I think the game modes too. You know, I mean, I kind of dabbled with Wes a little bit doing time trials on Gran Turismo and you and Lather on multiplayer lobbies, but you know, when there's no one around, there's still quite a lot to do in the single player with all the missions, licenses, yeah. circuit experiences, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. But yeah, it's a nice middle ground to me. It's not it can be punishing. It's certainly not a Forza Horizon, it or mm-hmm. a need for speed type thing but it, it can be enjoyable as well without sort of being frustrating yeah i mean what i find quite interesting about you and laffer though is you've both got steering wheels um but you don't seem to use them on gran turismo you use your controllers and, I, and i'm like kind of the only one sitting there still you using the wheel on this and i i, I really enjoy it um but I'm, you know, laffer does well, yeah, he, he's on and off wheel. though. He's he's on and off. Um, I think with his wheel. Isn't I think he? he's transitioned over. I think he transitioned over the period because there was a there was a time when both me and him sort of dabbled on both, and we were both kind of finding ourselves just faster with the controller, just because you know, I guess because you can turn your car quicker in different directions and right. things like that. But he's kind of, he's persevered, and I think he is now pretty much a hundred percent on his steering wheel. Right. Um, but I still, I like to sit on the sofa. You know, we're yeah. playing what nine nine o'clock to eleven o'clock at night. I yeah, want to be, yeah, I want to yeah. be on the sofa in front of the big TV. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand that. Plus, completely. sometimes when you are using the uh, the foot pedals and steering wheel, you do you do get tired sometimes yeah. after a while. Yeah, you do. Yeah, hundred percent agree with you on that. But I don't know. I think since since I got the wheel and pedals, like it, I I just. I'm playing Gran Turismo, like that. That is all I'll use, just because. But for me, it adds that extra level of immersion. It's just so much fun, and it you know it just feels so nice as well. So, um, but but but, but I have but obviously I have played it with the controller, and um, I think it works really well because the haptic feedback on the controller is just really really good on Gran Turismo as well, and. And, and and it's not just the feeling of the game as well. It you know, and we have mentioned the graphics a few times, but it's that added thing is is what I've been enjoying doing recently, as you might see on the Twitch, is uh if we, you know, on the multiplayer races the, the, the game all automatically saves a replay for you um of the whole race and then you can go back and watch it and then you can um you know take pictures, change the camera angles, uh 
Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember yeah, when no, games used to actually fun. do that back in the day? Like, I even remember things like Halo. Like yeah, early yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, sort of like Halo, Halo ODST and Reach yeah. and stuff. Like, yeah. you'd go back in and you'd look in your options. You have these, like, replays of, like, your firefight modes or whatever. Yeah. And you can go in and watch the whole thing and you can switch between players and you can pause it and zoom and move the camera around and yeah. things like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's so fantastic. That, that yeah. technology's been around for a while and it is great when it's implemented. Mm. Yeah, and the cool thing about Gran Turismo is it adds um it adds ray tracing into the replays as well. So they actually the the, the replays look nicer than the actual game when when you're playing it, which is really cool. Uh and, and as you say, well, you, you get, get more chance to pay attention. Yeah. Because when you're racing, to be honest, just you're looking at the road most of, of the time. Course, you're not yeah. really that aware yeah. of like the graphical surroundings per yeah. se. Yeah, but but what I always look about it is you know you 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 can pause at any time in those replays and go into camera mode and just take cam. You know you know you can take photos in any angle you want and stuff. So if you're in a little community all having races together, it's just quite fun just to go back and take pictures of your races and share them with each other it just makes it i don't know I, I i just think it makes it more fun to be honest just just having that ability to do it we've done it on the discord haven't we where yeah. it's like I, I posted pictures of you spun out yeah that's like it that. yeah it just, yeah <laughs> it, it, it just extends the fun a little bit you that's know that's it yeah yes yeah, it's, it's <laughs> yeah and that's something i really like about it and i i also i mean this has been in racing games for ages with with all the fours as well but just the ability to Create your own paint jobs on your cars as well. So, you know, we've 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 got the 360G logo in there, which we can put on the vehicles and the helmets and the racing suits and that as well. Which is which is another really cool layer um, of the game to just make yourself a little bit more of an individual, which I really really like. So, um, you know, it's got really it's got a lot of cool aspects to it. To be honest, we, you know, when you're playing with people online, it just makes it a lot more fun. Um, mm. As but as we still moan about it though, they still need to sort the lobby system out on this, which is a little. It's bit not strange. perfect by by a no. long way. I mean, Wes has kind of had a little bit of a, a fallout with it, hasn't he, because of them f- nerfing his force feedback recently, and you know. We every time we get a good lobby going, we have to close it to change track, and then you lose all the people that you've had tagging along, yeah. and you're starting again, and yeah. it is really frustrating. But you know, this game's going to be around for seven, eight years, isn't it? That's yeah, very yeah. Long How is was it around. possible that games like Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter enabled you to basically change the game mode, change maps, the amount of people in the games, just almost absolutely every option you could have available? This was in lobbies in like a game that came out a few months after the launch of the 360. Yeah. And like now you've got a game that literally pretty much needs the internet to work to mm. get the most out of it, and it can't sort that bit out properly. Come on, like. No, I understand the frustrations. It's than, yeah. It's worse than that, though, isn't it? Because this is Gran Turismo Sport. Plus, essentially, you know, it's a it's an improvement on that. So the stuff that they had in that game that they haven't got in this one. Yeah, yeah, but, like you know, the ability to change got... your tracks and cars in a lobby, which is what we're mm. crying out for. But uh, but I think what Darren is getting at is the fact that you have to be connected online to even play the single player, which I think is absolutely insane. You know, you can't even do your cafe or anything if you're not connected to the internet. Yeah, but that's a. I mean, that's not necessarily this game. That's the industry as a, oh, as a no. whole, isn't yeah. it? It's been, it's been creeping in since Microsoft announced the Xbox One. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, loving doing the races, and uh, obviously we're still doing the Forza Thursdays. I didn't join this week because uh, I think I was in bed. I'd literally my my missus and my family just got back from Australia, so I thought I'd better not push my luck and and game on the night that they're back. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't game on that evening, which uh, I think you can say is fair enough. So, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, what else have you been playing? They've been good, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
Me, uh, this week, kind of, I always saw dabble into FIFA now and then just to keep going with it. Partly because I'm a Newcastle United fan and I'm like, you know, just love trying to see what Newcastle United would look like in the future. Um, <laughs> and partly because I'm kind of like compensating for how bad they've been over many, many years. <laughs> right. um, and the other thing is I've been playing Sniper Elite and um, finished that this week. Oh, so wow. That was good. Oh, so yeah, um, I mean so, the missions are big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So might as well um, just just talk about that now quickly then. Um, so I've been playing some Sniper Elite Five with Peebs. Um, we've done the first two missions on it now, and uh, yeah, we're really enjoying it. And as you say, the mission, the levels themselves are absolutely huge, uh, and it, it kind of leaves things open ended. Like you have a main objective per se, but then there's the side missions dotted throughout the map, and then you've got the secret collectibles as well. But that main mission you can... So they, they, yeah. So that That's main sorry, mission you can... Like that, that... Yeah, can I... Yeah, just to don't mention. So, yeah, so the main missions you, you can kind of go about in, in, in a variety of different ways, if you so wish, which is quite cool. Um, however, me and Peeves did get a glitch on that second mission, so we were going. So we're going for the Chivos and trying to get everything, and we got all the collectibles, did all the side stuff. But there was one. It said that we could extract, but there was a mission to exterminate uh, some general, and it said, "Oh, he's in the ballroom," and we literally killed everyone in this area, and and we and and it didn't say that we'd killed the dude in the ballroom, and the ballroom was completely just empty, full of dead people. I was like, "Oh, okay, so." We'll just finish the mission and have to go back and do that again. But apart from that, the co-op works really, really well. I, I think it makes the game a little bit easier because if one of you gets um, knocked out, you're on the floor, then and then your teammate can come and re re revive you um, instead of having to go back to a checkpoint. So, so that's not too bad. And I think the co-op just adds an extra element to the game as well because you're talking about where you're going to go on the map and you can decide to be sneaky or go all out guns blazing you can take people out at the same time with your sniper rifles um yeah so you know for for a game pass day one game as well i think i think it's really really good what were you gonna say sorry yeah, Dan? i've enjoyed it yeah no i was i was saying like it's it's weird that they, they have moved that now towards a more open-ended open world approach because i remember the earlier ones that i played like probably v2 was where I first played it. They, it was like quite linear. You'd obviously have a level and you just progress around a certain part of the map. You didn't obviously have this big area that you could explore and do other things in. Yeah. I it think was it was like about number, game, number wasn't it? four when they did that, didn't it? Moved that over. I mean, is this five or four? Yeah. I can't remember. They do the odd ones five. in between. Yeah. yeah, five. Yeah, it used to be like COD, didn't it? Where you'd... It kind of looked like it was an open world, but essentially it was just funneling you down a route. Do yeah. you still have to do weird things like taking shots during aircraft flying overhead? And yeah, if you want to be sneaky, yeah. Behind the noises and stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's all that yeah. in it. Money, money. My only disappointment is I found this one a lot easier than four. Well, um, I mean, I ramped, I ramped the difficulty up to its absolute max, and it just didn't really challenge in any way. Oh wow! You know, I mean, you, you don't get me wrong; you still die, and you, you know, if you, if you end up sort of alerting people when there's ten, fifteen people around you, then the numbers are gonna, gonna tell on you. But before it used to just be a lot harder. There used to be more longer shots and. Um, I don't know. It just I I really just didn't struggle through it, even with the difficulty ramped up. Wow! You could say you've improved since the last one, or playing the last one made you better at this one. Well, maybe, but I just remember that we again. I used to play with Lather quite a bit on this one, but we just never ever were able to pull it up to its maximum difficulty because it just it was really really hard. <laughs> Hmm, that's interesting, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, I mean, I I mean, I mean, haven't really died much, and Peeb seems to be the one that dies all the time when we're playing it, um, rushing around a little bit too much, but I think if you're stealthy and you're sneaking around and and taking your time, playing it properly, it isn't too bad. 
But we've been in sections where, you know, we've had just guys just running at us. It felt like infinite men and we've just been standing there just popping them, <laughs> just coming out of corridors and stuff. And it's been just quite amusing, you know. To listen to the rest of this week's awesome episode where Darren talks about his regular games as usual and I talk about many games including Pac-Man Museum, Death Smiles, Mario Party, Xeno Crisis, a few shmups, Anger Force Reloaded, Hunt Down, Gan Ryu 2 and Blackbird. We also run down uh, the latest news, including the PlayStation Showcase, where we discuss the Resident Evil 4 Remaster, Resident Evil Village in VR, the new Horizon game in VR, Spider-Man shockingly coming to PC, Stray, the Callisto Protocol, Street Fighter 6, Tunic finally coming to the PlayStation, and Final Fantasy 16 trailer, which looked awesome. Uh, there is some other news as well, including GoldenEye, um, but you need to, obviously, as I say, subscribe to the Patreon to listen to the rest of this week's show. So head on over to patreon.com forward slash 360 gamercast Sign up for as little as £5 a month. Get a awesome show every single week of the year. And every single month, get put into a random prize draw to win some prizes as well. Which is, as I say, only exclusive to the Patreons. So sign up today, and if you forget, just head on over to 360gamercast.com. All the links that you need are there. So I hope to see you join the awesome Patreon very soon.